This is HRW915P041. It says in the figure below, the pendulum consists of a uniform disc. They give us the radius and the mass of that, attached to a uniform rod with a certain length and a certain mass. Okay, calculate the rotational inertia of the pendulum about the pivot. All right, so first thing we got to do is um, figure out, okay, here the pivot, is, the pivot is here. So what I really have is I've got, I've got a, uh, a rod, and we know the rotational inertia of a rod pivot around its end. And we have, well, we have a disc. The disc, though, we can treat as if it is a point mass at its center of mass, which is right on the end of the rod. So you've got two things. All we have to do is add up the rotational inertias to find the total rotational inertia. All right, so the rotational inertia of a rod, I'll put it like this, rotational inertia of a rod about its end is one third mass of the rod, length of the rod squared. Okay, the rotational inertia of a point mass, um, let's see, I'm just going to call this the disk, disk, um, is the mass times its distance from this from the pivot. Okay. Now that means the total mass or sorry, the total rotational inertia is going to be both of those just added together. Okay. Now we do have some some things to figure out here. So well the rod the rod we don't have to really make a lot of changes. It's of a mass, um, they give us a mass here. I'm gonna call that uh, mass one or no, sorry, mass of the rod. How about that? Mass of the rod times, and they give us L, okay? But here's the thing, for the disk, so it's the mass of the disk, but R, R needs to be the distance from the point to, this, to the pivot, and that's L plus this little R here. I need both of them. So it's gonna be L plus little r squared. Luckily, I know all of these. I know everything that's in here, so I should be able to just put numbers in and get an answer. Keep in mind, we need to put everything in in uh, standard units. It's very, very important. Okay, so we get one third mass of the rod, do, 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 uniform rod, mass of 265 grams, so that's 0.265 kilograms. L they gave us in millimeters, we need to put that into meters, 500 millimeters, well let's see, there's a thousand millimeters in a meter, so this would be half a meter, okay, so this would be 0.5 meters squared plus mass of the disc, let's see, it doesn't raise 760 grams, that's 0.760 kilograms, then L, L is again 0.5, and R is 10 centimeters, that's 0.1. So together that would be 0 0.6. I'm going to put point, oh, come on, 0.5 plus 0.1, just to be very, very clear, and squared. Okay, if I put all of that in the calculator, I get... 0.29568. So, well, they've got 0.299. That's close enough. I don't know why mine would be different from theirs. Hmm, that makes me concerned. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I can only say that so many times. Um, but if I round it, I get 0.29. I get 0.296 uh, kilogram. Oops, kilogram per meter squared. They have 0.299. That really does bother me. Why am I different? If you can figure out where I'm different, let me know. Maybe I just put something in wrong in my calculator or something. But um, but yeah, that should be it. So next up they wanted, what is the distance between the pivot and the center of mass of the pendulum? So we need to figure out where the center of mass is. So I'm going to flip the, flip the page here. Um, what I have is I've got I've got center of mass, and I'm I'm just gonna do this up and down so that I don't have the I mean that doesn't ma that doesn't matter. Um, I've got the the rod, and then I've got the disc. 
I can treat each by its center of mass. So the center of mass of the rod is at a distance of L over 2. Okay. And I'm just going to call this, this is like Y, positive Y. Okay. So this is, if I call this 0, that's the pivot, then this is at a, at a, a coordinate of L over 2, and the disk is at a coordinate of L plus R. So if I do my handy dandy center of mass position equation, you know, that's uh that would be the mass of the rod times the y coordinate of the rod plus the mass of the disk times the y coordinate of the disk all over add up all of the um masses. Okay? So that gives me mass of r is that's the 760 oh no wait sorry mass of the rod mass of the uniform rod is l there it is so the rod is 0.265 again 0.265 y of the rod is l over 2 oh which i know so let me just put that in L over 2, L was 0.5, so it's going to be 0.25. Oh, I'll just put it in like this, 0.5 over 2, okay? Plus the mask of the disk is 0.76 times, we already did that, that's 0.6, okay? All over mass of the rod plus mass of the disk. Okay, put that all in my calculator and I get that the y coordinate of the center of mass of this whole pendulum is 0.5095 blah 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 blah. If I round that I get 0.51 meters. Now they want what is the distance between the pivot and the center of mass of the pendulum, but I said the pivot was at zero so if the center of mass is a 0.51, then that is the distance between the center of mass and the pivot. So that's good. It matches. Now calculate the period of oscillation. Okie dokie. Well, for a physical pendulum, a physical pendulum, the period is 2 pi times the square root of the moment of inertia about the pivot divided by mgh where h is the distance from the center of mass to the pivot. Now we just calculated i and h basically in parts a and b so all I have to do is plug them in. So 2 pi over um, well we got 0.296 but I'm gonna use theirs just because I have it. Well actually actually let's see what mine does. 0.96 over the mass of the whole thing. Now that's important. It needs to be the mass of the whole thing. So that's the 0.265 plus the 0.76. G, of course. And we just found the distance from the pivot to the center of mass. Boink, there we go. Put all of that in the calculator. And I get 1.51 seconds. Now they've got 1.52, that's probably that difference that somehow I got that difference in the beginning again. But uh, but that's it.